You don't even know yourself what you're talking about. You want to sit there and talk about the Mandela effect and how it has changed the King James Version, and you want to holler, my word will never pass away. You don't even know what the word is. It's not black and white ink on a book. You don't have to have that book to know who God is. You can take every single Bible that you got in the whole wide world and every stone that's ever had a carving on it and burn it, roll it down the hill and it never be seen again. And God is plenty capable of letting you know who he is. Let me tell you something. He's more powerful than this, quote, devil that you people want to keep giving all your glory to. Oh, it's the devil. It's the witches. It's the new age. It's Fiona. She's the one that made all this happen. You people have lost your freaking minds. The word will never pass away. Jesus is the same today, tomorrow, and forever and ever. If you want to call him Jesus, Yahweh, Yahshua, whatever. God is the same. And his word will never pass away. So you go back to your Bible. Get it out right now. Turn to John 1 and 1 before it changes. Where it says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The Word was God. And then you go and you look up what the Word translated means. It means logos. Logos means the thought. The idea. Then you skip on down there to verse 10 and it says that logos, that Word, that thought, that idea was manifested. It became flesh. And walked among us and the world didn't even know him. Who is it talking about? It hurts my feelings. To know that you are so ignorant. Lacking in understanding. And you stand without any kind of umbrella to protect you in this ignorance. Because you have no excuse to be ignorant. You're no different than me. God said, search that ye find. Seek for yourself to study and show yourself approved. You don't need to be sitting out there just eating it up and eating it up and eating it up, eating any kind of food that some preacher or teacher or elder or whatever the heck they want to set themselves up there and call themselves. The food, you want to eat it without looking at it and think it won't make you sick? You say, oh, I don't want to concern myself with that. Well, don't. But if you want to sit there and claim that Bible, you better claim the part where it says in the end days they'll be running all over the place looking for the word. They'll be looking for the truth. They'll be looking for this. They'll be looking for that. And it won't be nowhere to be found. Because I'm going to tell you something. People like me that have took all their years to try to help people like you. One day, God's going to harden our heart up and he's going to shut our mouths and we won't care. We will not turn and look at you. We will shake our heads and our feet will stomp and we will walk away. The Word became flesh. It ain't the Bible. The Word is not the Bible. And the Word was messed up way before this Mandela effect. How you like that? Wanna call me a witch? Go search it out yourself. Instead of being little robotic peons that sit on the bench every Sunday and every time the doors is open in your buildings with steeples on tops, listening to these idiots that don't even know what they've been talking about and don't know now. And that's how come when they see that the words have changed and they admit it, they quickly recant and say, Oh no, you know why? Because they're filled with fear. That's why. And I'm angry. I'm angry. That you self-righteous hypocrites that is so in need right now. Of the love and glory of the prime creator, the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending of all things. To come in and give you understanding. Would dare stand up and rebuke my spirit and tell me that I'm demon possessed. Because you don't know who you're talking to. 
Christ in me is stronger than anything that you would ever come to know and you don't know the heaps of coal you put upon yourself as I bring to you a sword that is sharp on two sides and cuts you down in the name of Jesus Christ, the one you profess to know. I have nothing to hide. Do you? I mean, I think you do. Or you wouldn't be so scared running. Wouldn't be so quick to throw up something and say, Oh, no, 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 I don't want to talk about that. I'll talk about anything. I've never hit anything in my life. And I won't start now. Oh, but my feelings are hurt. I do need the Lord to deliver me of a lot of things. But I remember, too, what my son told me. He told me one time, he said, Mama, God is the author of all things, and all things is His for glory. And anger is needed sometimes, because without anger, you wouldn't get things done. But the trick is, is to use it and then let it go. Because if you don't, bitterness will come. And that is what will tear your heart all to pieces. And he's so right. I don't want to be angry. Sometimes I question, though, Lord, have you put this anger here to harden my heart for a reason? To give me a heart of stone? Is that what it's going to take for me to stand up to these people? If that's so, then so be it. But it's so hard because I don't know this kind of anger. I've never known it before. And I don't like the way it feels. But I'm telling you, I know to whom I belong. And I am a warrior for him. Beware you that come at me with a sword, because I'll meet you back with one. I'll meet you where you stand. And I'll come in the power of the Lord. Christ anointed in me. And what is in me is a lot stronger than anything you'll ever hope to bring at me. It only takes one. It only takes one Mandela effect. And once you've seen what cannot be unseen, everything will change. And you can never go back. For many years now, millions of people have been sharing Mandela effects. Millions of people are conscious that things from the past are not the same anymore in this reality. There are different lists of 50, 100, hundreds of Mandela effects. Some might resonate with you and some might not. But it only takes one. They cannot be denied. And when something cannot be denied and you see the change in reality. My friend is literally a Mandela effect. Like Nelson Mandela, he died. Last year by slicing his throat. And there's a whole rigmarole and reason why he did it. But the point is, is he did it. Okay, so there was a funeral and there was a wake. I couldn't make it. It was all the way in Sacramento and I live in the Bay, in South Bay. So, you know. Anyway, so last year he killed himself and was buried and whatnot. And you know who I see? Like two or three weeks ago? My boy Scarecrow. Like, shit, fucking life, man. But, my my other friend brought it to my attention. And then he even showed me pictures of, like, dude's wake. I wish I had him, but, uh... Yeah, maybe I'll post another video with, uh... With it. But, uh... Yeah. Now, there's been some theories about, you know, the whole what happens when you die kind of deal. Well, I have knowledge 
I'm not going to get into details of how I have this knowledge. But, let's say you die. And it's not your cosmic death, like, where all your parallels are finally dead. But, like, let's say you're murdered or something. Or something happens and you're killed. Well, essentially, your brain will just switch over to the next parallel over. You know, so, like, the only difference between this parallel and that parallel is you're dead in this one. I think that's what happened with, with my boy. However, with us transferring, you know, to our own parallels, like, you know, the Mandela effect and how it's created and whatnot is pretty much explainable by CERN did blow up our world. Blew it up. But our consciousness was blasted over to the, however far the infinite parallels go, however far we went over. The point is, is we went over. So like, a bunch of small shit is different from the reality we came from. I have been doing this weird quantum shift for a very long time now. Like, I've noticed it for a very, very, very freaking long time. And I can provide you with some creepy motherfucking shit. But I just need to get this off my chest. It's bugging the fuck out of me. Like, he's alive. I'm kicking it. But he's got a big-ass scar on his neck. <sighs> Apparently, he was actually, like, didn't slice himself too deep in this one. But, yeah. I just thought y'all should know. It's bugging the fuck out of me. If you guys have any, uh, uh, theories and whatnot, feel free to jot it down on the bottom. But, like, let's say you know somebody that's died. But they're not dead in this reality. I want you to talk about that. The, the, the thing that really gets me, or is getting my interest, is the Mandela Effect. Are they possibly getting all the truthers, I mean, a possibility, and, and making us parallel shift to a place with uh, more danger? So we can't stop them. I, I, I was watching the JFK video today, and I, and I couldn't believe it. There's like, I remember four people in the car. There was always four people in the car. There was never six people in the car. Now I know something's going on. And like when I saw stuff like Captain Crunch with the end now at the store, I always thought like they're just trying to, you know, they're not doing too good in sales, and they're just trying to change it around, make it more hip. And now I'm watching the Mandela Effect, and no, they're not changing it around. They're saying this is the way it's always been. It's always been capped in crunch. I mean, it was always Captain Crunch, just regular Captain. And like, um, I was watching The Addams Family, and there was never two Ds in The Addams Family. So there's a lot of things that have changed. And, you know, it could have been one parallel shift where a series of things changed. There could be people missing that we don't know that aren't here. There could be extra people here. And I was, always, I was always led to believe that in string theory, you know, uh, quantum physics, when you, it's a membrane, and when you, there's supposed to be three to seven universes exactly the same. And if you were to find one slightly different with like, say, I have a scar on my face right here, but everything else is the same, but I have a scar on my face now, then that would be a big shift, because now everything is the same except for the scar but that's like three to seven universes exactly the same so if there's a scar that means you're, you're further away from the, the original uh, universe I and mean, there's like a long list of stuff that changed that means that we actually are far away from where we think we are there's a lot of stuff different here and think about this if, if it's changed so far which is recent because I just saw a year ago there was four people in the car just a year ago just a year ago, I was watching the video, there's four people in the car. I think it was like eight months ago. Ten months ago. 
Well, think of it this way. If things have changed already, how much more stuff is going to change? We're, we're, we're seeing things that have changed suddenly. And tomorrow or next week, is more stuff going to change? Is this going to progress? Is it going to continue on? So the Mandela effect is interesting because now we're parallel shifting. You got to get your heart right with God. And I just feel alone. I have no nobody. It don't seem like around really that I know personally that I can really get into deep seated conversations with. And by that I mean going down deep into the rabbit hole of things that that the normal Joe just is not capable of talking about. They have no interest in it, and you go off and leave them like a race car driver leaving a little Volkswagen behind. They just go, mm, what? what are you talking about? And then they're not interested if you even try to tell them. But then you can get on social media groups that do know what you're talking about when you mention something like quantum physics or metaphysics or the Mandela effect. They, they know exactly what you're talking about. But... Uh, because you don't believe everything just like they believe it, especially when it comes to that King James Version of the Bible, or, or you bring up anything to do with God, if you don't say Jesus, just like they want you to say Jesus, or Christ, just like they believe in Christ, if you say Christ within... All of a sudden, you're New Age, and New Age is a bad thing. You better not use the word enlightenment, even though it means knowledge or knowing or uh, jump up the ladder of, oh, I get it. Oh, no, don't you say that word, because then, then you're evil. You're witchcraft. I am so sick and tired of being judged and put down by the way that I use my words and I word paint and I try to speak to people, especially through writing. Because that is word paint. And I, that's the only way you can express yourself in social media, really, unless you want to get on a a YouTube video and show your face and really put a tone to your voice and they just break you down to where you just finally get so fucking pissed off you just tell them well damn you know I try to talk to you easy and pet you and say yeah we well, you know God bless you yes 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 because you know what I love God too I believe in the prime creator of all things up above down below and in between and uh Nothing, absolutely no thing can happen without the prime creator's knowledge because I believe it is a Christ consciousness. It is a consciousness, this prime creator. Uh, but that's not good enough. If I don't say it just the way they want it said, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm evil. I'm a witch. I've been seduced by spirits. I'm a devil. You know what, you self-righteous hypocrites? Let me tell you something. If you go back in your King James Bible, your New International Version, what, whatever Bible you want to use, Jesus Christ himself, the, the one set of people that he come against the most was you self-righteous hypocrites.